ages, mankind has been attacked again and again by gruesome and hideous beings whose sole purpose is the destruction of the human body and spirit. Dracula. Frankenstein's monster. The werewolf. And Coulter. But perhaps the most gruesome, the most hideous, the most disgusting of these vile villains was... The Weir Pig of London. Our story starts on a decrepit street in a rundown area of London's crappy district. Scientist Tipton Beaker and his assistant Gore are working late in the laboratory of the Acme Silk Purse Company, Sousier Division. Gore, have you obtained that secret ingredient for me yet? Hey, yes, sir. I, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had to get it off a dead man in the morgue. Why did you have to defile a dead man to get nutmeg? Oh, oh, nutmeg. I, I did not hear the... Meg part. What's in that bag? Never mind. Never mind. We have not Meg in the spice cabinet. You are quite strange, sir. Thank you, sir. Wasn't your name Igor when we first met? Uh, yes, sir. But in order to buy Christmas presents for us, my mother had to sell a vowel. Christmas sure got weird when Vanna White became Santa's helper. <laughs> okay, well, let's see if this formula works. The, the pig is strapped down and ready, sir. Let's see. Half a cup of the radioactive barium. A quarter cup of glowing isotope. Half a bottle of cognac. And a pinch of nutmeg. Now, the final test. We rub it on the ear of the pig to see if this glowing slime will serve to soften up the skin of the sow's ears as a first step toward my radically new silk purse process. Ooh, sir, the the pig is turning green. And yellow. And chartreuse. And uh, sort of a mauve, uh, swirled with, uh, what is that, Gore, beige? Uh, Sort of an eggshell, I think. Oh, oh no, sir. The pig is breaking free of his restraints. Quick, Gore, get me some more nutmeg. How will that help us, sir? This pig smells really bad. Maybe the nutmeg will make him smell, I don't know, more Christmassy. It seems that might not be our biggest problem, sir. we pig crashed out of the lab to terrorize the city. What he did to people's pantries wasn't real pretty. He made a pig of himself, eating spicy and mild. When it came to food, the monster went hog wild. He ate all the crumpets and bagels and every last treat. He ate every kipper, which was no mean feat. He ate all the veggies, the fruits, and the tarts. He ate all the meat and the celery hearts. And when he was finished with the big Christmas goose, he went right ahead and ate old Dr. Seuss. But that only begins to tell the weird pig story. Now, here's the part where it gets really gory. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Staffordshire County Fair. Step right up, see our side show, see the man with three elbows. Perfect when you're looking for a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink, eh? <laughs> and here's the amazing Mentello. He can guess your marital status just by checking out the ring on your finger. Now... Well, our main attraction, the act you've all been waiting for, our special guests, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. <laughs> oh, oh, blimey. No. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the humanity. 
Come on down here, Billy. No one will see us down here in the root cellar. Yeah, Chrissy. Now we can have all the sex we want. Oh my God, Chrissy. He's got your yams. And your radishes. No, no. Not your rutabagas. No, no. Stay away from me. That's not a pickle in my pocket. No. It was at this point that the British military brought in their best and brightest to try and stop the pig in his tracks. I say, Lieutenant Wright. Yes, Major Disappointment. Would you be so kind as to get a good-sized bag of our most powerful gunpowder, paint the word peanuts on it, and put it outside that market over there? Right away, sir. Minutes later... <laughs> Ah, jolly good. He's taken the bait. But, sir, we neglected to set a fuse. How will... As I expected, the monster was blown to bits when he lit up his after-dinner cigar. And so, the menace of the Weir Pig of London was over. The residents of the fair city could once again rest easy. And as a bonus, once the mess was cleaned up, they all enjoyed a year's supply of bacon. Unfortunately, the Acme Silk Purse Company turned to making other things out of silk. Quickly go all the nutmeg. I'm this close to making the cat's pajamas. who was featured in this creature feature. Our narrator was Alan Peterson. Tipton Beaker was played by John Timpain. Gore was played by Don Rooney. The Carnival Barker was played by Don Bryant. Chrissy was played by Mary Lyon. Billy was played by Don Rooney. Major Disappointment was played by Don Bryant. Lieutenant Wright was played by Don Rooney. And Coulter is pretty much played out by now, am I right? The organ was played. And the werepig was played by that creature in your nightmares that chases you and is so close it's breathing down your neck, but it never quite catches you. Good night and pleasant dreams. <laughs>